What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I got a little treat for y'all today. We're gonna take out we're gonna take a look at this new truck we got. We're gonna check it out, probably do a review, uh, do some cinematics obviously, because you know your boy liked them cinematics. But hey, right now we're in the chat uh, the Camaro. I used to have a challenger right here. But we're in the we're in the Camaro right now, heading back, and uh, I'll show you what it is. And guys, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching the videos. More things coming soon. I appreciate y'all. Uh, to the new viewers, uh, man, hit that like button, subscribe button, hit the bell for more notifications, guys. More stuff coming. More videos, man. I'm so excited. Let's see, I might get a uh, get some tint in the truck, not the truck, the Lexus, cause uh, your boy is burning up in there, brown as hell. Uh, other than that, guys, here we go. Guys, if you can see between the banana trees, ooh, here we go. What we got here is a 2020. Dodge Ram 1500 Bighorn. This model right here has a 5.7 liter Hemi. It's pretty nice. Oh man, that's sweet. So what you have to do is Lock the doors, then press the circle button twice to start up the car. And let's get in there. Most people know that Mr. Clean Magic Eraser removes crazy. The Ram 1500 Hemi 5.7. What I think about this car, push start. Automatic 2020. It, it's really nice. Uh, it has the heated side mirrors. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, this rearview mirror is just sloped like the logo, like the grill itself. But I love the interior. No. And the classic buttons you may need for the driver's side. Automatic lights. There's probably more to this truck that I'm missing. Yeah. We had a Challenger, like I said, when we was in the Camaro, I almost said Challenger, <coughs> but I'm so used to the Challenger steering wheel, I'm still changing my music over here and doing my cruise control over here and the challenger it's like this and the camaro it's flip-flopped so we be driving taking a road trip to come uh with the, in the camaro i always end up pressing the skip button over here skip the music but in the challenger and rams most likely the cruise control is over here. I'm trying to set the cruise control, and I always end up setting the uh, change of the music. When I set the cruise control, I want to change the song. It's crazy. But anyways, let's get back to it. Here we have it right here. It has its own compass. Let's see. Let's try to focus a little. I don't want to focus. Okay, so we have this menu here, along with this menu, the speed speedometer. Uh, I might set this up right here. We also have vehicle information. We have the tire pressure. They're kind of everywhere on this. They're near the same, but everywhere. That back one, I don't know. We I might have to turn that one down. If we continue over, 
we have the temp, the coolant temp, the trans temp. This is my first time going through this, guys, so bear with me. Oil temp, oil pressure, oil life. Yo, son, do we need an oil change? Shouldn't that be full? Hmm. Battery voltage. We're at 13.7 volts. And a lot of NA right now. Everything's not applicable. Ooh, son. 14.8 a gallon. They must have been driving this in the city. Uh, Forgot to tell y'all, we currently have... What is that? 12,721,000 miles on here. Yeah, I was going kind of stupid. Am I running out of gas too? Ugh. But, let's keep going. What else do we have? The mileage. Oh, the trip meters. My bad. Radio stations. We could swap back and forth. No messages. Screen setup. Oh shit. Uh, I guess we'll try to do this real quick. Upper right. What, what, what does the hell this mean? Come on. What? Oh, I got you. Oh, I got the time. Time, son. We're gonna use the time. Uh, okay. We got the temperature there. Need that. Need that. Do we need the battery? I don't think we need the lower left. I don't think we need the battery. I would think I would need the hmm, coolant temp. Sounds sounds better. Cause you never know. Uh, then we're gonna go back. Back it up, Terry. Back it up. Back the speedometer. And these gauges are nice. Uh, the air flows everywhere. One thing I do love about this truck, I don't know if you can see it over there. There's some cup holders there. One, two here. Did I find one in here earlier? Okay, no, I didn't. But two more here. And the hell you need two more right here, bruh. That's like a Red Bull and a Coke. Uh, here's the drivetrain. We have the uh, hey, switch gears, knobs. I, I I really like this. This is I wasn't ready for this. I'm you when I first did a Jaguar, probably the late 2000s, and a Jaguar had one of these. I was so amazed. Now I see it, I'm like, damn, technology. Y'all slow for American cars. But you switch gears through here. Let me switch hands. So if I put it in reverse, in reverse, it's running in reverse. Okay, hold on. So I think I didn't have a car on. In reverse, reverse cam. I always love reverse cams, man. Neutral, screen turns back and drive there's a reason why I completely forgot I thought I did it it must have turned off when I got in but when I did push the start uh, not push start the remote start I guess I had to come in here and press the start button start engine to start the engine now currently as we can see I didn't really look at the uh, RPMs, but I do got gas. I was tripping. But what's so cool, right here, you have a little US, not USB, uh, 12 volt. I'm guessing you could put something in there, GPS most likely, if you wanted to. Uh, the little compartment over here, pretty cool. I, I believe you could. I don't know what the hell you put in there. 
Only thing I can think of is that, hell, it would have been smart for Dodge to make that a wireless charge. There's a little area right here. They should have put a wireless charge there because that would have made everything awesome. Much more awesome. There we go. Passenger side. Zoom out. Not that bad. You know, it's a passenger seat. Cloth seats, two-tone. Gray and black. Don't say that's black. This is a quad cab. Yeah, I called my, uh, my truck a crew cab. No, I called it a quad cab, and it's actually a crew cab. Because it's much better. I was educated on, uh, on it in a comment. My bad. I'm not a truck guy. But there's that. Go more into electronics. The important parts for people are the radio. Uh, a lot of people care about the tow package. Hey, just let y'all know it's a 4x4. So you do automatic high, low, and two-wheel drive in neutral. Huh. Interesting. Uh, for those people that like to tow, Jesus, you have, you can't really see it. It's not, there, there we go. We have the traction off, tow and haul. I don't know those. I don't know, know that one. Hey, maybe I do. It's probably a sensor. Then you have two USBs. There's two USBs in the back as well. So it's pretty cool. So we're going to play with the radio for a minute. Check it out. This is left to try. House I'm finna go to town. Move in the green my bees about to get them so got to bring. That's not bad. So we're going to go audio equalizer. Y'all know me. Let's keep playing with it. Let's try. Y'all may know this song from the past couple of videos. system is amazing guys wow like I am jealous my Camaro's uh, stuff is really bad you hit the mute button they got a mute button right here save you just slapping so hard like nah son unmute music the app oh the dimming mirrors let's see what we got here let's turn that down let's look what we got here we got the heated seats backup cam climate sorry for the air guys uh, it's hot as hell uh, heated seats dim mirror mirror dimmer a compass phone radio control audio settings
steering wheel warmer. That is amazing. That's pretty dope, man. Like, ah, oh, I love the sound system. This makes my Camaro look sound bad. Cause I really want at least a little bit of bass on my Camaro. So, if you want my review on it, I honestly want my review on it. I honestly give this like a 9.5 out of 10. I really like this truck. The quad cab. You know, there's nothing, nothing more I can say about it. Like, it's impressive. You got the handlebars to get in. Uh, it's kind of squished in the back. So you have a tow package ready for you. The dial is something to get used to because I hit the AC earlier. Uh, as you can see, the buttons. We have everything that's on here. So you can adjust everything manually if you want to do that. Uh, push to start. All the navigation stuff is really nice. There you go. That's for the lights, the dimmers. So nice, so nice guys. Let's check this out. So, right here. So right here. I'm pretty sure this is the parking brake. So what if I push it? Oh, I'm a dummy. That's for the pedals. No wonder I couldn't reach them earlier. I had to scoot all the way up. So if you're wondering how to use a parking brake, Normally there's a lever we always use to push down, but with this, the only thing you have to do is pull, and it sets the parking brake for you. Then, yeah, see, parking brake is now on, and it'll give you a warning if you try to press it again. There's a warning. To release parking brake, press the brake pedal and pull the switch. Push the switch. I'm sorry. And bam. Oh my god. Man. This is nice. Thumbs up, man. Thumbs up. Like, I am feeling this more than I'm feeling the, uh, the Ford F-150s. Next, we probably have to get a Ford F-150 see how that works out. I'm going to show y'all how easy it is to hook up to the radio. A media device. We'll go to settings. Let me turn on the car first. There we go. Settings. Bluetooth and phone. And disturb pair. There we go. I believe my two Bluetooth is on. It is. So I'm gonna search for it. That device. There we go. You connect. You connect on my phone. Yes and yes. 
that easy. And so we're connected. Allow. First thing in all this pasture, I got BBS diamonds sitting on my saddle. I got rich off selling horses. I got rich off buying cattle. My shotgun with a shotgun. My great grandpa used to battle. If my son go touch his sister, I'ma whip him with the paddle. Cause we don't do that shit right here. And we don't like your cow right here. If it's that put up on my land, I'm gonna. So far, I can't complain. It, it reacts to everything I'm doing. It's a smooth riding car right now. Uh, can't complain. You know, I just drove a big F350 Super Duty Power Stroke V8 to the dump just probably about an hour ago. It's just it's so responsive. I'm only doing 36, 36, 37, not even 40 yet. Some get used to. I want to see how these brakes are. And some get used to. I've been like. I've never been in a smaller size truck. It's always been a big truck. But let's check it out. Brakes are pretty, pretty strong, man. Pretty strong. They're stopping me. So, let's give it a little goose. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. We'll probably goose it a little when we leave out uh, from the gas station. Because right now, we're just going to fill up with gas. It's not even at the halfway point yet. But we're just going to see how it all works. These brakes are hella good. Very impressive. Very impressive. Don't pull out in front of me. We had a 2012 Dodge Challenger RT with a 5.7 liter in there and that thing was beautiful. This sounds good. This sounds really good. I believe the gas is on my side. That was a unique experience. It's a gas capless tank. Uh, I was kind of confused at first, but I guess that's how it is. But when we leave out of here, we're, we're gonna goose it a little. We're gonna goose it a little. As you can see, I'm reaching for it. Wait for these trucks to leave out.
it's not positive traction. Huh, unique. I pointed the camera the wrong way, huh. but it's all good. Hey guys, if you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. That was a long video. I hope you liked the review of the 2020 Dodge Ram Bighorn. But, wow! Two more videos for you to watch. Appreciate it, man.